Hello everyone and welcome back. My name's Dustin Kreis and today uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, I have a video here I want to present to you guys that's not over video games. And I feel a little weird kind of setting in front of the video games, but um, uh, you know, this is something that's very nostalgic for me and it's a show that I feel like not very many people know about and I kind of want to spread the word on it because as a kid, this was one of the top five shows that I love to watch. And um, it's unfortunate because I live down here in the States. This was a Canadian-made show. And um, it's obvious why people down here don't know about it. Because I think the Sci-Fi Channel ran it on Saturday mornings. Um, it was like around like... Um, what would they call it? Saturday anime or something like that? You know, I'd watch the the anime movie that was on Saturday morning, and I think after that was this show. And the show I'm talking about is The Odyssey. And this has nothing to do with Homer's Odyssey, um, other than sort of a, uh, a person sort of trapped and trying to get home. Um, it, it does share that aspect. But what this show is, it's something really special. And I hold it right up there with The Adventures of Pete and Pete as one of those shows that they never could really do again. Like, this could not be made for today's television. Not because it's bad, not because it has suggestive themes, but just because I think if they made a kid's show like this today, it would be so dumbed down that it would not be worth watching. And I feel the same way about uh, The Adventures of Pete and Pete. It was of its time. It was a show that did not talk down the kids. It treated them as, you know, individuals that had a mind and was able to think about things. And uh, let's go ahead and just talk about this show for a second. What it is, is it's a story of a young kid named Jay Ziegler. And um, he's sort of a, um, sort of an everyman, I guess you could say. And he's trying to get in with the local uh, Tufts. Now, I should say that, you know, in the pilot episode, all these kids look to be about nine years old. By the time the series picks up with the second episode, it looks like, you know, a substantial amount of time has gone on. But uh, he wants to be in with these sort of, uh, this local gang of kids. And when I say gang, you know, I mean gang as it was back in the early 90s with kids, you know, running around with squirt guns and things like that. And uh, part of the initiation process is him bringing his father's telescope to uh, sort of present to the club and allow them to use it. Now, Jay's father died many years ago, and um, Jay sort of has this weird uh, fascination with his father and everything that his father had, because he never really knew him. And he's a big mystery in Jay's life. So this telescope means a lot to Jay. And when he brings it to this club, of course, these kids are kind of the wrong side of the track kids. And they, uh, they take the telescope and trick him into leaving the tree fort so he can't get his telescope back. Enter his friend Donna, who tells Jay, hey, you need to go get that telescope back. That's your property. Go get it back. So Jay uh, sneaks into the tree fort to steal the telescope. And, you know, these uh, kids chase him to where he tries to escape the tree fort by uh, jumping out with a rope. And what happens is the rope breaks, he falls, hits his head, knocks him into a coma. Now, this is where the show gets brilliant. It straddles the line between Jay's real world of him being in the coma in the hospital and this fantasy world, this sort of post-apocalyptic world where uh, there are no adults. Um, the oldest kid is a kid named Brad, who's 15 years old. And as the show tells us, he's 15 and he knows everything. You know, <clears throat> I remember a kid thinking that, like, oh my God, they're 15 years old. They must know everything. And uh, thinking people that are in their 20s, like I used to think Kurt Cobain was so friggin' old. Like, oh my God, he's 26. He's 27 when he killed himself. That's so old. I'm 29 going on 30 now. And it's like, I just remember as a kid thinking, my God, that's so old, 15. Um, but uh, 
Brad is 15 years old, the oldest kid in this world, and he rules over all. And he sort of has, um, he rules from this thing called the Tower. And from the longest time in the show, the Tower is sort of this mysterious place that we're working towards, but we don't really know what it is. And he sends out his, um, he has these people called Monitors, which one of the most prominent villains in the show is a kid named Finger, who uh, causes a lot of mischief and trouble for Jay. And, you know, it's sort of one of those things where, like, Brad sets up this government to rule over these kids, you know, and then, like, the local, like, sheriffs and things like that sort of twist what uh, the vision was, and it becomes this sort of bureaucratic nightmare. Um, really heady stuff for a kid's show, and it does not talk down the kids. Like, I remember watching this as a kid thinking, like, I, I want to go out with my friends and play this. This is what I want to play when I'm outside. Because um, it really takes, like, the local geography and just sort of twists it a little bit um, to make this post-apocalyptic world where there are no adults. Um, fantastic stuff. And as Jay sort of moves towards the tower, because he's trying to find home, he desperately wants to find home, which, of course, he doesn't understand what it is inside his dream, but it's him trying to find his way out of the coma. And as he moves closer to the tower, we sort of um, unravel some of the mysteries of Brad and, uh, you know, the mysteries of this world. Eventually, um, I think it's at the end of the first season. It's been a while since I've watched this. But eventually, maybe it's in the middle of the second season. I can't remember exactly when it happens. Eventually, Jay does wake up from this, um, the coma. And it's, that's when the show gets kind of really interesting because he has to sort of balance this real world with the dream world that he's created. And it's, it's very um, important to note that <clears throat> his friends in the real world are transposed into this dream world as different characters. His best friend Donna, who um, has uh, some kind of um, crippling disease. I don't, I don't know exactly what... It is. I don't know if the show actually states, but she walks around with a um, a cane, and she becomes uh, Alpha in this dream world, who is one of the members of the library club. That's something important I should note as well. Um, the government is sort of sectioned off in different clubs. There's a digging club. Uh, there's the library club. All these different clubs to separate kids into what they should be doing for the world. Um, sort of a caste system, if you will. So Alpha is a member of the library club, whereas um, Jay's sort of other friend, who is actually instrumental in him having this fall, is um, also in this world as a different character. And his name is Flash in this world. And he's sort of a rogue-type character who uh, starts off sort of as a local gang lord, uh, much like he is in the real world, and uh, eventually kind of sees that, you know, Jay's quest is going to lead him somewhere important, so he should help Jay out. Um, I, I mean, I, I don't know what else to say about this show other than you guys really need to go out there and check it out. Um, unfortunately, if you want to pick up this DVD set, unless you live in Canada, which just might be in a second-hand shop somewhere, I don't know if this was just uh, mail order only, or if it was actually available in stores. But um, this will set you back quite a bit. This is a um, $100 DVD set. And a lot of people say, why would you ever spend that much money on a TV show from the 1990s? And it's, it's, it's pure nostalgia. And I've watched two episodes since getting this. I had to throw it in. And um, it's worth it for me because I absolutely love this. But I would say that anyone wants to check this out, you can find a bunch of episodes on YouTube um, to uh, sort of test the waters, if you will. And then, of course, there's always things like BitTorrent for, um, you know, I would really suggest going that route. I know it's kind of, you know, it's a little murky uh, ethic ethics-wise, but um, I would hate for me to tell you guys, go out and buy this and then have you be disappointed with it because it is a big investment. Um, and it's something you may really want to... Um, check out. Really, it's for people who grew up with the show. 
And, you know, just sitting here thinking about it, I forgot to talk about uh, a certain thing. How many people on this show um, went on to bigger and better things? Uh, you have the character Macro, who is one of Brad's sort of uh, top generals who kind of you know kind of rules almost in Brad's place in a way, and uh, that's played by Ryan Reynolds of you know movie star fame Ryan Reynolds. Uh, you get to see a what is he like thirteen or so in this show, uh, and he's actually really good in the show. Um, you get to see a young um, Devin Sawa in one episode, um, who he was famous for um, Idle Hands. Um, also, in that same episode, you get to see um, Jewel State, I think is how you say her last name. Uh, she played Kylie in, um, yeah, yeah, in uh, Firefly, in Serenity. So, um, you know, she was also in Flash Forward, if anyone watched that show, Flash Forward with Ben Foster on the Disney Channel. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to go back and see this, and you're like, oh, I know who that is. Um, really kind of, you know, a springboard for a lot of uh, Canadian youth to get into the TV industry. So it's one of those things like, it's just a great fantasy show for children. And I honestly cannot wait to have children and have them watch us when they're young. Because for me, it takes me back to being a kid. It really does. Um, because I would go out and, you know, that's what my brother and I would do. We lived on a 60 acre farm. Um, we didn't have a lot of friends that lived right around us, so we had to kind of go out and make our own fun. And, uh, watching this show on the Sci-Fi Channel, Saturday mornings, it gave me a lot of ammunition, uh, to create my own world when I went outside and played. Along, of course, with Dragon Warrior and Final Fantasy and things like that, video games that I played. But, uh, this, I think, along with, um, The Adventures of Pete and Pete, is just, like, if there was ever a time machine to sort of put things in to say, this is what it was like to be a young kid in the early 90s. Um, this is what, this and the Adventures of Pete and Pete is what I would put in there. Uh, I think they're just perfect encapsulations of what, not only what I think, what I remember my childhood being, but what I wish it was like, you know, um... Just a fantastic show. I'm going to put a couple links down below so you guys can check out um, different videos of the series. Um, it's one of those things, though, that you really need to kind of watch it from beginning to end because the episodes do carry through each, you know, it, it, it is an episodic show and not sort of an adventure of the week. Um, but yeah, this kind of stuff could not be made today. We could not have kids shows today that actually treated like treated kids like thinking individuals. Instead, it would be some dumbed down, they're farting on each other. Um, probably, unfortunately, probably maybe a little something like this, uh, but I still love Adventure Time. But um, a really a thought-provoking show. Um, made for kids, but I, I really do believe it's also made for adults that would watch this with their kids. So definitely, guys... Go out there, um, check some links below, check out the Odyssey, um, you know, get it however you can. If you want to invest in the DVD set so you have a physical copy and you can show people that this show did matter, then definitely go out and pick up the DVDs. But um, yeah, that's all for me, guys. So thank you guys so much for watching this. Take care. I'll see you next time.